Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. All right, and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, all that stuff. As always, I'm your host, Peter Romoliotis, and on Twitter it goes PD Beats. And I have my guest. His name is also Peter. He is a actor, voice actor. You've heard his voice in um, many amazing classic cartoons. He is also on Beyond on the Freeform right now. Um, his yellow jacket. We're with Peter Kalamis. Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, and I don't know, two Greeks on one podcast. I think we're breaking like a FCC rule or something. Right? Yeah, I know. And two hockey fans as well. I mean, we're just breaking exactly. all the rules. Also, uh, Rimalot, the guy that does your intro, ridiculous. You, got, yeah. you need a Greek guy, Rimalotis. That's not even your name. It's Rimaliotis. <laughs> and you got to hire a Greek announcer to get this crap right because this is upsetting. You're, oh, Greek police come after you, my friend. <laughs> I know. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry. But uh, I will, I will, we'll talk, we'll talk off air and, and then maybe uh, we can work something out. But Peter, thank sure. you for joining us. Um, first, right off the bat, I find it very interesting because, you know, you're a voice actor, but you're also a comedian. You're doing all this, all kinds of stuff. What this, what, when was the first moment in Peter Klamis' life where you wanted to kind of be in the entertainment industry and do these things? Uh, pro- I remember watching, man, I'm dating myself. The Carol Burnett Show. And it's ironic because she just had, I think, her 50th celebration. It's been all over a lot of networks and stuff lately. And I used to watch her as a kid and, and watch, you know, Tim Conway and Harvey Corman and Vicki Lawrence and all that. And I used to imitate Tim Conway doing the old guy and, uh, you know, Mrs. Aquakens and all those, <laughs> all the characters, everybody. I just lived for it and, and watching yeah. that reaction, that laughter. Uh, I was hooked then, so we're talking grade four. So uh, I, I would tell my classmates then they'd be like, "Hey, I'm I'm gonna be a fireman when I grow up," and I'm like, "I'm gonna make I'm gonna be a, a joker and a fool and hopefully make some money." Mm-hmm. No, I've, absolutely. You mentioned, um, uh, like I mentioned, you do a lot of voice acting. A lot of like for for our viewers that are not aware, but some of your you've done a lot but like the ones that come to mind that i wanted to talk to was of course goku from dragon ball z and right. ralph from ed and eddie of cartoon oh. network two kind of polarizing different voices there how <laughs> t- t- take us kind of th- through that um because i always find it interesting where the pr- well, how like how's the preparation when you kind of have a gig to kind of go do goku and then oh now i gotta transform the ralph like I- i'm curious about that uh goku i did <clears throat> um Originally, I took over from another friend of mine, another actor, Ian Corlett, who was the, kind of the original North American voice for Goku. And he ended up leaving the show for uh, whatever reasons that he had at the time. Uh, so I took over, and I knew very little about the whole Dragon Ball world, but I learned very quickly how massive it was and how determined the fans were. Because some people kind of liked what I did. Others hated me, <laughs> and you still... <laughs> To this day, find voice comparisons all over the internet. Do you like Calamus or this actor or this? And they compare us all the time to this day, which I still find kind of funny. Uh, but I had death threats. I had what? I had all sorts of stuff. <laughs> One guy, yeah, had threatened to kill me, and I actually had to track what city he was down in and have the police come and pay him a little visit because it got a little weird. Uh, and other people have been very gracious about it, so it runs the gamut. But. Uh, it's a voice where, I, you know, me, me and Ian have a similar kind of cadence and range. And I think mm-hmm. that's probably why I got the job after Ian that, I, that they thought I was close in that range. But I still tried to make it my own. And I think over, over time I did that, hopefully. A, lo- a, lot, a lot of people also, I find it interesting because now with social media and all these documentaries and a lot of interviews, it's different because a lot of people kind of know what you look like. But a lot of people are kind of like they hear the voices and then... Um, they might not like you. You might like you might walk in a coffee shop and then like you have the biggest Dragon Ball Z fan of all time, but he doesn't realize yeah. that you're Goku. You're the voice of his one of the voices well, of his childhood. And that's happened at a few conventions, specifically Dragon Con, a massive convention in Atlanta that happens uh, on Labor Day weekend every year. That's mm-hmm. great, a lot of fun. 
but the last time I was there, again, I have a lot of, I bring a lot of memorabilia and stuff to my convention appearances, a lot of like from everything from dolls to posters, magazines. I, I kind of come, I see it as kind of a store. So I bring a lot of cool stuff mm-hmm. uh, for fans <laughs> considering going. I, I hopefully bring some cool stuff. Um, but all, even on the convention floor after hours, everybody's having drinks and beards and all that. And every now and then I'll see somebody dressed as Goku and I'll walk up and say, hey, dude, I'm Goku. And they're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. I, 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 and then they take a second. They're like, what? No, Peter Klamas said, oh, my God. And then they still freak out. People do you do, and then do you do the voice for yeah. them? Well, every now, the first time I went to Dragon Con, every single person that came to the table wanted me to do a Kamehameha. And I did. And then by day two, no voice. I had no voice left. Can you, but, can, okay. So you, can you do one for us right now? I can or? do one right now. Okay. Kamehameha. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. For sure. For sure. And you're talking about Rolf. There's actually a video on there uh, somewhere. On the yes. Side. What if Rolf did what Goku? What if Rolf did Goku? And, oh, I laugh my ass off. And, and every now and then it, it kind of recirculates again. Rolf was an interesting voice because I, I for Danny Antonucci, the creator of Ed, Ed and Eddie, uh, held numerous auditions. And I auditioned for every single Ed and every single male character on the show <laughs> yeah. and then kept getting shut down. Red for Ed, no. Red for Double D, no. Red for, <laughs> Red for Eddie, no. Uh, everybody, everybody. Uh, Kevin, nothing. Uh, and then I was going, and somebody else, a friend of mine was auditioning, and I went, and uh, Danny popped out of the studio, and because he, he saw me outside, and he goes, hey, we're, we're having trouble casting this foreign kid. Uh, do you want to come in and give it a shot? And I'm like, sure. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm Greek. I could do it, yeah. Exactly. So I just went in. <laughs> You know, and it's like, what are you doing, Ed Boy? Ah, stupid nail in the head, Ed Boy. And that was it. That was it. it because they didn't want to, it, to, to really be apparent as to what country he was from, just somewhere <laughs> Eastern European. And being Greek, I get it, as do you. I mean, you remember going to English school, yet having Easter a month after everybody else, and coming to school with a lamb sandwich, trying to play with the kids. No, it's some freaky meat. They've never heard of it before. That's so if Rolf to me is second nature. <laughs> I, I have cousins who are Rolf. Oh, no, it's just, it's one of those. So there's a documentary about, I think it's the Ed and Eddie video game. Yeah, there's some behind the scenes stuff. on. It's it. yeah. really, really good for people that haven't checked yeah. it out. You're, you're in it. Everyone's in it. Kind of, yeah. they kind of give a little snapshot of every character and how like they got their voice down. They did. Um, they did. You're, uh. Very scruffy. I am. This, this, <laughs> oh, oh, in the interview. In the there, interview, in the, yeah. Yeah, I look uh, 80 in that. <laughs> and it, it, it's kind of cool because it kind of gives you the behind the scenes. But, uh, you know, you mentioned it a little bit. I mean, is it – I think it's it's one of those things where um, – and I, I always relate it to kind of authors because you know names – like, you know J.K. Rowling. You know what I mean? Like she, uh, That's a bad example because everyone knows what J.K. Rowling looks like. But there's a lot of like right. – authors that you're like oh that's a big name but people maybe don't know what they look like and i I think that happens with voice actors but is that changing now because of what i mentioned about the comic cons and everything absolutely and just with the internet itself i mean you can look up who you know aaron fitzgerald looks like or terry clausen looks like or any anybody anybody uh chris summer anybody you want you can find out what they look a lot of most of them have uh web pages uh their own web pages and stuff but conventions are the coolest thing because i've had people come up to my table and uh, i've had people like break into tears literally um saying i grew up with this show i used to run home and watch the show and uh, literally t- like crying at the table and like dragon the- ball z or some other ones too dragon ball z is a, is a big one um to this day and Ro- and rolf and ned Ed and eddie is another uh it still holds. It's actually getting more popular as far as convention and stuff goes. Um, but a funny interaction was related to Dragon Ball Z. I was at a convention in Texas, I think. And uh, some kid comes up. To <laughs> he's about nine years old. And uh, he looks at my banner and he's like, Do you do uh, the voice of Goku? <laughs> I go, uh, yeah. Let's hear it. <laughs> so then I do a line and he goes, huh, must have been a long time ago. And, he walks up and I'm like, get this bastard kid out of my sight. What, what, who let him in? 
hilarious. No, like you hear a lot. Um, we've had a lot. Of, we we we've been pri- I've been privileged to kind of an honor to have a lot of really cool guests um, on the show. We had um, Tamsin McDonough who plays uh, Lucy on Killjoys, which is on Space and Sci-Fi. She talking to me Very about. Cool. She's talking to me about all these like conventions and. It's a big, and especially, you know, with the horror boom these last couple of years, the horror yeah. movies that are coming out. I mean, conventions are now, it's not, it's literally not just about comic books. It's about, you know, like pop culture and social media. Yeah. It's it's everything. And the nostalgia, the nostalgia has, has been as like the strongest it's been in years. You mentioned like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I mean, how many times do you... Probably like have conversations about Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Like, I'm, and then it goes offsprings to another conversation about another show. I mean, it's powerful. Sure. And social media has kind of made it explode in terms of like nostalgia is living on there forever, Peter. I agree with you fully. Uh, and I, I'm going to actually uh, Kamea Con, and it's being held in Dallas. It's in Irving, uh, Texas, just outside of Dallas, <clears throat> May 4, 5, and 6 of uh, this coming spring, 2018. And it's a massive, first, all-inclusive Dragon Ball Z convention. So I'm going representing Goku. And there's a lot of other great actors throughout the show that are going as well. Um, but I wanted to, I've been looking to get some Ed, Ed and Eddie memorabilia. And it's very rare. Oh, it is. They, they, Cartoon they Network in general, too. Very rare. Uh, I have a cell from the show that they gave us as a gift once to each of the cast. And it's not a brawl, but it is a cell of the show. Um, but I was trying to get something, and I was going to, you know, download an image from the net of Rolf, you know, next to me. I didn't know what to do. And there was a, a fan on Twitter who lives in uh, Eastern Australia, I believe it is, who had done some edit and Eddie vectors that are, I thought were really cool. So I, I direct messaged him and said, hey, would you be interested in, in doing a couple? And he flipped out. And he flipped out. He's like, oh, my God, I'm doing some sketches for Rolf. So he's going to do some sketches for me to bring to the convention in, in May. And uh, it it's just really cool that people still enjoy the show and, and enjoy what we did. And Ed and Eddie is one of those shows where, unlike Dexter's Laboratory, uh, we're, uh, unlike a lot of shows, you kind of saw all the kids in Ed and Eddie's neighborhood like in every episode. So there was kind of like a like significance even though they were smaller roles but like you always right. saw ralph you always saw johnny and it's one of those things where yeah like the ed and eddies like those, those three guys were the main focal point of the show but it really sure. was like an ensemble cast where it everyone really kind of had a part right so it's like yeah maybe like i like for sure you talked to everyone about ed and ed and eddie you mentioned ralph everyone who watched that show will know about ralph even though maybe he's sure. not like about the whole episode he shows up a bit but it's such a like, are, have you ever thought, like, I, I have one of the most kind of unique voices on that show? Like, it, it, it's well, amazing. I, I was thankful because I thought I, I had the, the coolest character in my mind on the show because he was so interesting. And uh, I especially loved, it was a Christmas episode in Yechmayek. I, I did this Yechmayek song. It was basically a Christmas song, but it's about this creepy, creepy female Yechmayek character that would come at Christmas time and... <laughs> torment the kids um and i remember when i got to the studio and they're like oh yeah you're doing a song and i'm like huh because huh? i'm not a singer guy yeah. <laughs> and they're like no no it's like kind of a raw version of the song i was like oh okay and it went it was so fast paced you know because it was oh, yes, my <laughs> and on it, it that fast and i think we did it in two or three takes because it was either like okay we're either going to get this now or this isn't going to work at all so luckily we got it but, you know, we, we I mentioned it quickly, you know, voice acting, but I want to talk about something really cool that's that's, that's happening in the life of Peter Kalanis. Um, beyond on uh, Freeform, congrats on that. Thank you very much. A lot of success. Um, and uh, it's coming back on air very soon, correct? January 18th, uh, season two premieres uh, on Freeform and uh, on the Freeform app. Uh, they're going to stream the entire season again. So it's a uh, very Netflix style where all the episodes, all 10 episodes are released on the first day. But you can also watch it on the Freeform channel as a weekly episodic for, uh, for I would say, 10 weeks, but it's actually nine weeks because the first episode is two hours. Yeah. But I had a lot of fun. It's a it's not a character that I usually get because uh, he's kind of a sociopathic uh, assassin fixer, uh, if you will. But yet he has, you know, this eight-year-old daughter at home and a family at home, and they don't know what he does. They're clueless to what he does. And 
you know, so he'll go off, kill somebody, come back and hug his daughter and, and paint pictures with her, mm-hmm. which as an actor is the coolest thing to be able to do. Cause you go from there to there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he goes from human to <laughs> uh, an accentuated version of human and kind of a psychotic version of human. So it, it was a really cool role. Um, they wanted to kind of go against type because usually when you get a villain in a lot of shows, it's like the big burly, really uh, gruff looking guy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, I'm not physically imposing. I'm not a super tall guy. So I, I just appreciate the fact that they gave me a chance to do this and then they like what happened. And, uh, I, I couldn't be more thankful with the show and I'm very excited about season two. There's some really cool stuff. happening. No, absolutely. And I have, I have to ask. So social media is, is, is huge. A lot of people have different opinions on it. So I want to know in their voices, of course, what does Goku think, or what would he say about social media? What would Goku say? Uh, I think if you asked him how many followers he had, he'd probably say, It's over 9,000! <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, Ralph, how many followers do you have on Twitter? We do not have Twitter in the mainland. But Mama goes from village to village and tells people what has happened. <laughs> Oh, man. Every time we do Rolf, it's just like, I'm sorry if I'm laughing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's surreal. But um, well, speaking, speaking of voices and, and the Greek thing, uh, there was a show on a cartoon uh, animated show called uh, uh, Class of the Titans. Yes. The Clash of the Titans. Um, and it was a bunch of uh, Greek era kind of characters fighting like great gods and demons and stuff like that that was kind of the idea of it but again i went in and read for a a number of them of the male roles and uh they were like oh okay that's it and i said well i just wanted to read for uh grandma hercules his 94 year old grandmother and they're like all right and then i just did my grandmother and probably your grandmother too so it was just like oh Ed, if i don't you sit down and have some you look hungry what's the matter with you <laughs> and then i got the role so i got the role so uh, everybody else was playing all these uh, superhero guys and i was playing the 94 year old greek grandmother i think it's there's gonna like a, a little bit of a load of question but what is what is your favorite thing about doing what you do as an actor, as a voice actor, as a comedian, what is, is there one thing, Peter, that stands out for you in terms of like, whether it's, you know, the stories that you get to tell, whether it's the people you get to work with, is there anything you love about it over that tops everything else, Peter? Yeah. Uh, for me growing up and to this day, uh, I always like interesting characters whether I meet them in a, at an airport or meet them at a convention or get to work with them on a project uh and the weirder the better uh i mean people can go along their entire lives and just be safe and kind of boring but you know like when you're even at a party sometimes you find that you sit beside somebody unexpectedly and they're kind of off a little bit but they're really entertaining and interesting and i've always gravitated to really neat characters uh it's always i've always just been drawn to it um and the fact that Doing a voice, I mean, like I say, it's me doing a 94-year-old Greek grandmother. It's me doing this Super Saiyan from another planet uh, saving the world. You know, it's me doing Yoda uh, in in Star Wars Lego. It's being able to do whatever you want. It it allows you not to be pigeonholed as long as you sound a certain way or you can portray yourself a certain way, whether it be a sociopathic assassin or, you know, a doctor. Uh, I just love being being able to turn into other characters. No, for sure. Well, Peter, we'll we'll wrap up, but thank you so much for coming on the show. I really, thank really you. appreciate it. We've been wanting to do it for, for a little while, so I'm, I'm glad we finally got to do it. A uh, couple of last things. What, what is in store? What could people be in store for from Peter Kalamis? Um, in, uh, I'm going to edit that out, don't worry, because sure. a phone just rang. And you know what? It's like... I, and it happens from time to time, but it doesn't happen enough where I think about it. But, like, the phone is right exactly. there. So I guess I'm just lucky that no one ever calls me during my <laughs> recordings. <laughs> um, okay, we'll go five, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, so, 
Again, thank you so much for coming on the show. What is uh, what can people expect from Peter Klaus in 2018 uh, that you're allowed to tell us about? Then I'm allowed to tell you. Um, I just did a. I got to be careful because I just did a Christmas movie. Uh, it's a small part in a Christmas movie, but I got to work with kind of the one of the biggest um, female actor icons probably in Hollywood history, and that that was uh, an incredibly exciting thing <laughs> that's all i can say about it very cool uh i also did a, a guest spot on, on a very very cool kind of sci-fi related series uh, just recently and again that's all i can say this sucks but you can't say anything oh no of course i, um, I know but, how it is though so yeah but uh moving moving forward uh i'm going to be releasing my second comedy cd shortly the first one is available on itunes and spotify and all those places all those places just the best of peter calamus volume one uh, it's a picture of me and my grandf- uh, grandmother as I'm grabbing my nut sack. <laughs> uh, six years old, just, hmm. <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, I don't know how, I kept that picture for decades. I don't know, what am I going to do with this? It's going to be an album cover. It's my cover for my comedy <laughs> album, yes. Exactly. Uh, so, so doing that and then uh, started work on a couple animated uh, series. One is called Dragon Prince. And uh, the other one's called Screechers, and they're and they're both uh, Screechers is just in the very early stages, but it's a really really cool show. Uh, and one other thing to catch is called uh, a show called Beat Bugs on Netflix. That's a really cool computer generated animated show, and, it, and every episode revolves around a Beatles song. So they'll have like a Sergeant Pepper's episode or oh, a Yellow Sub- cool. episode, what have you. And it's a really cool show. Uh, second season is on right now, and I play uh, Cockroach, uh, and. And a number of other characters on that. Very cool. Well, Peter, all the best and, and happy new year moving forward. Thank you very much. And anybody who's uh, in Dallas, uh, May four, five, six, please come down to Kamea Con and, and say hi and uh, and take in the festivities. I feel I, I, it was almost like you were going to do Goku's voice there, but you didn't. I thought you were going to do Goku's voice there. Ah, oh, I was expecting it. <laughs> but, I like it. Out. I yeah. Like it out. I know. Well, thank you so much. Where can people follow you on social media? Like, what are the handles? Yeah, it's at Peter Calamus on Twitter and uh, Facebook again, Peter Calamus, uh, and in Instagram it's real Peter Calamus because there's a fake one there. There is there's a I, there's a fake one. It, it took me a while to get on Instagram. I was slow to the to get on there, and then I got on there, and it's like uh, all these photos of me, and it's like, who's this dude? Who's this? <laughs> it's a fan account. Yeah, it's a fan account. So it looked very real. It had pictures of me at the, all over the place. I just you know I'm slow to the I'm slow to the take. Wow. Well, thanks again, Peter. And we really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, and let, let's get back on, you know, after us, uh, maybe after Beyond Starts or, or something like that. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, we also do panel episodes where it's like me sure. and like a bunch of people. So I think that'd be kind of fun. I'm in. Yeah. So this has been Pop Turnative. You can catch previous episodes of Pop Turnative on our YouTube page. And you can uh, listen to audio only on uh, iTunes as well. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and on iTunes. Until next time, this is Peter Kalamis and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.